Hello, my name's John, and I'm a storyteller. I love stories. I hope you do as well. And I've got lots of wonderful stories to tell you. I've actually produced a website with all these stories on www.biblestorycards.co.uk. You can see all my stories. I'm also a bit of a painter. And so I paint pictures to help me tell my stories. I hope you enjoy them. Hello, everybody. Here's John again, the storyteller. Um, I'm, I'm telling stories from the Bible, of course. I usually have a picture of the Bible at the beginning of my stories, but I've forgotten to bring it with me today. But let you know that every one of my stories is from the Bible, which is God's word to us. And God tells us, tells us truths and things through stories, through events that happen. Somebody asked me once, what's your favorite story from the Bible? The favorite passage in the Bible? Well, there's 66 books of the Bible with hundreds of thousands of chapters. So what was I to say? And I heard a man say once, that's easy. It's the one I'm reading at the moment. And do you know, that's how I feel about these stories. What a wonderful story this is. And I've got another one today. It's about two or three characters who are quite different in personality and do quite different things. Some of them very good things and others very evil things. And that leads me to the first character here. Why, his name was Ben-Hadad. Doesn't sound very good, does it? Well, he was a bad character. He was the king of a country called Syria. And Ben-Hadad hated the Israelites. And he wanted to destroy them. And he had a, a big army. And he sent the army to battle against the army of Israel and to destroy them. Well, here's another character who was quite opposite to him. It's the prophet Elisha. Now, Elisha was a very calm man, a very quiet man. He wasn't, a, you know, a warrior or anything like that. But he didn't need to be because uh, Elisha had a, a, a wonderful... Uh, knowledge and experience that meant that he didn't need to re to rely on his armies and things like that he knew God he was God's prophet and God told him things often he would pray just quietly and things would change as a result of him praying for it and of course he was praying for the king of Israel and his army fighting against this wicked Ben-Hadad. And this is what happened. Ben-Hadad gathered his friends, his army together, and he drew up some plans and he said, listen, this is how we're going to fight against Israel. This is where we're going to go to lay an ambush for them when they come out and I found out from my spies where they're going to be and we'll capture them and kill them all before they have a chance even to, 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 to draw their swords. So this is what he did. But Elisha was praying and God told Elisha where the king of Syria was going to go with his armies. So he said to the king of Israel, don't go there. You'll be in deadly danger if you go there. Just don't go there. So when the king of Syria, Ben-Hadad, went to this particular place and had his army already in ambush, nobody turned up. And he was so frustrated and very angry. And he turned to his men and he said, now come on, be honest. Who is it that's the spy in our camp? Who is it that's telling the king of Israel where we're going? Because this has happened again and again and again and I'm getting fed up with it. 
And one of his soldiers said, no, master, it's not us. It's a man called Elisha, a prophet from God. And Elisha knows what you're even thinking and saying in your bedroom. He's got a secret to all your plans because God's telling him. I'm not having this, said Ben-Hadab. We're going to get him. Where is he? Find out where he is. So one of his spies went out and he discovered that Elisha and his servant had gone to stay in a town called Dothan. When he found out that Elisha was in Dothan, he said, get to Dothan, get your army to Dothan and get him and kill him. I'm not standing for this anymore. So the army of Ben-Hadad surrounded the town of Dothan. It was only a little quiet place up in the hills. And uh, Elisha and his servant Gehazi went to stay there. Now one morning Gehazi opened the curtain, went out, opened the curtains, had a look out to the hills and was horrified because all round the town of Dothan he saw soldiers, chariots, spears, swords. They were surrounding Dothan and they were all there ready to capture Elisha and kill him. And he went to Elisha in a bit of a state. He was panicking and he said to Elisha, my master, my master, what are we going to do? There's an army surrounding the town. We're lost now. We're going to be killed, both of us. And Elisha, calmly and quietly, turned to Gehazi and said, Don't worry. There's more with us than there are with them. More with us. There's thousands of them out there and there's only our two, us two here. How can it be true that there's more with us? So Elisha prayed and he said, Lord, would you open the young man's eyes? Well, there's nothing wrong with his eyes. He was looking all right. Would you help him to see the more that are with us than with them? And God heard his prayer, answered his prayer. And the next time Gehazi looked out, not only did he see the army that was surrounding the town, but all around the hills, all around the mountains, there was another army. And they were, they were, they had chariots and, and horses Chariots of fire. And all these soldiers were up there, surrounded by fire. And there were ten times more of them than there were with uh, Ben-Hadad's troops. You see, that's one thing that praying does for you. I don't know whether you've ever been scared out of your wits or you're worried about something. Or oh, there's somebody at school that's bullying you or, you know, there's trouble in the family or some, whatever. What do you, do you often feel like saying, oh, what, what are we going to do? Well, the secret is to pray, to start with anyway, and see what God will do. Because God can do far more than we can do. And, and he says that we're to ask in prayer. It, he says in the Bible, uh, don't be anxious for anything, but pray about everything. And God's peace will come into your heart. Oh, that's a good promise, isn't it? Well, that's what we can do. Anyway, that's what Gehazi discovered. But still, the, the army was surrounding the town of Dothan. What were they to do? Well, here's what Elisha did. He went straight out in the middle of them, right in the middle of this army that was about to kill him. 
probably they were shouting, death to Elisha, death to Elisha, something like that. But as Elisha stood there in the middle of them, what do you, what do you think he did? Prayed. And this is what he prayed. Lord, make these soldiers blind so they can't see. Well, that's some prayer, wasn't it? And you know, God heard that prayer. And suddenly these soldiers couldn't see where they were going. And they were, they, they, they were all confused. And they didn't know which way to go, which way to turn their horses or anything. And then Elisha shouted out to them and he said this. Listen, this is not the place where you should be. Follow me and I will lead you to the man you're looking for. Looking for. <laughs> they couldn't see. So of course Elijah took them by the hand and he started to lead them. But instead of in Dothan, he led them out to the, ta the city of Samaria, the capital of Israel. There was the king in Samaria. And Elisha led them all the way to Samaria. And of course the king of Samaria opened the gates when he saw all these blind soldiers going through. And when he got them all inside, then he closed the gates. And uh, uh, th then he said to Elisha, Master, we've got our enemies exactly where we want them. We can destroy them now. Do you want me to kill them all? And Elisha quietly and calmly said, No, I don't want you to kill them. Is that the way you treat people when you capture them in battle? Do you, do you immediately kill them? Don't do that, he said. That's not the right way to behave towards your enemies. This is what you should do. Get them a meal. Give them a great big spread of food. Well, the king of Israel was astonished, flabbergasted at such a, such a, a request. But, uh, well, no, no, that's what you should do, says Elisha. Put a meal on for them. So that's what he did. He fed these soldiers. And instead of fighting, well, of course, he'd had, he had to pray that the Lord would give them their sight back so they could see what they were eating and drinking. So that's what happened. And they all sat there, and they must have been looking at each other and thinking, What's going on here? These are supposed to be our enemies. And they're being friends towards us. They're being kind and, and, and loving and, and, and feeding us with, with the lovely food. Now, said Elisha, we are not your enemies. You don't need to fight us. Our God is on our side. He ought to be on your side too. And uh, he opened the gates of the city and let them all out. Do, do you know what I read in, this is what happened in the old part of the Bible, the Old Testament. But do you know what I read in the New Testament? Let me read it out to you, shall I? This is what it says in Romans chapter 12 and verse 20. Well, before that, listen, just let me read it as it, as it says it here. Beloved, do not avenge yourselves. That means don't, don't get, a, get your own back. That's what it, avenge means. But rather, give place to wrath. That means don't, do, don't be angry. I will, vengeance is mine. I will repay, says the Lord. Therefore, listen to this. If your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him to drink. For in so doing, I'm not quite sure I understand this fully, but listen to what it says. For in so doing, you will heap coals of fire on his head. <laughs> well, Elisha didn't do that with these people, did he? Except that they must have thought, if he releases those armies of fire, 
on our head. We're all lost. So we better just stop being enemies and being friends. And it says in the story, right at the very end, this, these words. Then he prepared a great feast for them, and after they ate and drank, he sent them away. And they went to their master. Can you imagine what they said to Ben-Hadad? Hey, do you know what happened there? We all got fed instead of being killed. And he sent us on our way to say that he's not our enemy after all. Then it says, So the bands of the Syrian raiders came no more into the land of Israel. The best way to make your enemies, to get to defeat your enemies, is to make them into your friends, isn't it? And uh, prove that God is able to help you when you're in need. Is that a good story? I think so. Thank you.